Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm hoping you can hear me over the AC, but uh, I finally turned it on. Was kind of getting tired of feeling stuffy in my own house. <laughs> but anyway, I am here to do my May 2018 book haul. So um, throughout 2018, I've been trying to cut back a fair bit on buying books, and I've also included uh, library hauls in my book hauls just to convince myself I could still make these fun videos without buying a boatload of books per month. But uh, <laughs> this month I was kind of back to my old habits because I uh, had a couple of bookish events in May that I went to and what do you know, I came home with some books. <laughs> so in early May there's this uh, really small but intimate uh, little book festival called the Literary Hill Book Fest in Capitol Hill and I've gone for the past couple of years to uh, help man my writing uh, group's table and uh, tell people about the group. And while I was there, I wandered around to other tables, uh, including that of the Writer Center, which is a uh, really great uh, writing workshop center in Bethesda, Maryland. I've taken a few classes there, and uh, if I could afford it, I'd take them all the time. <laughs> so I figured I'd stop by and uh, see what was going on uh, with that uh, organization. And uh, I came away with this. This is uh, their annual poetry uh, literary magazine, <laughs> uh, Poet Lore. Uh, I actually got it for free. You know, they were just handing it out to, you know, uh, promote their uh, organization. And uh, so, of course, you know, that's more justification to take it, even though I don't actually read poetry all that much. <laughs> I've been trying to read at least one collection each uh, April for National Poetry Month, so maybe I can at least put this on the list for next year. <laughs> it sounds kind of pathetic like that. <laughs> the next thing I did in Eastern Market, which is where this book fest was held, and uh, an area I don't actually go into all that much despite working in Capitol Hill. <laughs> There's this bookstore that's uh, just down uh, the street from where the book fest was held. Uh, uh, prominent used bookstore in uh, in DC called uh, Capitol Hill Books and so I went in to try to uh, scrounge around all of the books crammed into nooks and crannies of this old row house and ultimately I came away with this one. This is Invention, The Invention of Wings by Sue Monk Kidd. It's been on my TBR for a while so that's how I justified the purchase. <laughs> So um, several years ago, I read The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd, and uh, I really, really liked it. I, I have a feeling that if I read it now, that I'm more entrenched in uh, reading a larger qu quantity of things, that uh, <laughs> I, I might not be uh, so enamored by it. But uh, at the time, I guess I was uh, slowly getting back into reading literary fiction, and it really stuck with me, and I, I liked it, and I liked the movie. Uh, so who knows, I probably still would like it now. <laughs> and uh, this is a book that she published a little bit after that, and uh, it also reminded me of this book that I uh, read in school in 6th or 7th grade. Um, it took place around the same time, around uh, the end of slavery, and uh, was in between the viewpoints of uh, a white uh, girl who lived with her aunt and uncle on a plantation, and then um, a slave on the plantation and it tracks them as young girls during that time, and then we jump into uh, the future, into the early 20th century, when they bring their granddaughters together to tell this story. And uh, that's another thing that probably is a bit too pat, the way that story was put together, but uh, it, you know, was a formative experience for me in my reading, and I really uh, liked it back then. And anyway, so this uh, synopsis reminded me of that, uh, at least generally speaking, so here it is. A triumphant story about the quest for freedom and empowerment, Sue Monk Kidd's third novel presents the extraordinary journeys of two unforgettable women, Hetty Handful Grimke, an urban slave in early 19th century Charleston, and Sarah, the Grimke's idealistic daughter. Inspired in part by the historic figure of abolitionist and suffragette Sarah Grimke, Kidd's novel is set in motion on Sarah's 11th birthday, when she is given ownership of ten-year-old Handful. The invention of Wings follows these two women over the next 35 years, as both strive for lives of their own, dramatically shaping each other's destinies and forming a complex relationship marked by guilt, defiance, estrangement, and the uneasy ways of love. 
So I'm hoping this will be a more adult version of uh, that book that I read in uh, in middle school. Uh, it, at the very least, I think that uh, it'll be a thoughtful read, uh, and I will be getting to it uh, sooner or later. It's near the top of my Goodreads TBR. A few weeks later, I was at another uh, slightly bigger, uh, or significantly bigger perhaps, a book festival called the Gaithersburg Book Festival. And I bought this book to be signed by the author who was in attendance. Uh, this is Cottonmouths by Kelly J. Ford. And I talked about it at length in my uh, Gaithersburg vlog, uh, book festival vlog, so I'll link that down below. So to summarize, this book um, is about a young woman who uh, fails out of college and returns home in a bit of disgrace to her small town in Arkansas and uh, gets a job babysitting uh, for a uh, girl who uh, she used to be infatuated with or actually is still rather infatuated with and this girl is running a meth lab on her property and uh, needs someone to take, a, uh, take care of her young child in the meantime. And so the protagonist is someone who is justifying this meth lab and I believe uh, more dramatic and deadly stakes as things go along in this uh, drug world, as it were, because of her feelings for this woman. Uh, so it's about two things that uh, very much intrigue me. It's about uh, drug culture, and especially in the South and rural South, which is an area I don't uh, read a whole lot about. I read a little bit, but, you know, it'll be good to return there. And also about uh, unrequited love and uh, same-sex feelings and that sort of thing. So complex things uh, that interest me. <laughs> so I bought Cotton Mouths at uh, the politics and prose uh, area of the book fest, you know, doing my part to uh, support the authors and support the, the publishers who bring them and all of that uh, by buying on site. And because I bought a book uh, from Politics and Prose, our, one of our local indies in DC, at the festival, I was allowed to peruse a table full of ARCs of ARCs, <laughs> which is, I was so stunned because I've been coming to the Gaithersburg Book Festival for a handful of years, and usually our prize for buying at pol the Politics and Prose tent is that uh, we get to enter a lottery for a big box of books that of course uh, I never win so you know <laughs> but this time we all got to be winners and take home an arc so uh, I really really like this <laughs> this uh, new model of uh, thanking us for our <laughs> purchases I hope they keep it up in the future <laughs> even though of course I did not need a new book <laughs> and I was uh, perusing the table for a while even looking for a book that uh, looked familiar to me which uh, was a little embarrassing I'm like hey I'm I feel like I watch a lot of booktube and I, you know, read a lot of book blogs. I should, you know, be more in the know about some of these uh, ARCs. But uh, instead, it took me a while to find this one. This is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. And I saw it and I recognized it and I thought, I should grab this. Uh, this is a YA novel, I believe, and it's one of those novels that deals with uh, one of the popular themes nowadays of fairy culture and about... Uh, mortals and half-mortals being taken away from our world and brought into the fairy world. Uh, but one point of distinction about this novel is that I've heard some adult uh, booktubers uh, sing its praises, like Jen Campbell, who I believe did a uh, book event with Holly Black, and uh, also uh, Kitty G, I believe, uh, also uh, liked this take on uh, fairies from the YA world. So I thought uh, these seemed like uh, singing endorsements and uh, worth giving this book a try. So I'm still at the Gaithersburg Book Festival and I am not done buying books yet <laughs> because I have to go to the library's uh, used book sale and uh, see what's on those tables. And once again, I was very good and I told myself I could only buy books that were already on my uh, Goodreads TBR. I couldn't just pick something up because it looked interesting. No, 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 no. <laughs> and also I tried very hard to only uh, buy one book. I also bought another book for my mother, but <laughs> hey, that's, uh, that's different. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I bought for myself. It's been on my uh, Goodreads list for a couple of years now. This is uh, The Wangs vs. The World by Jade Chang, and I'll read from the the flap. Charles Wang is mad at America. 
A brash, big-hearted immigrant businessman who built a cosmetics empire and made a fortune, he's now been ruined by the financial crisis. Now all Charles wants to do is get his kids safely stowed away so he can go to China and attempt to reclaim his family's ancestral lands and his pride. Charles pulls Andrew, his aspiring comedian son, and Grace, his style-obsessed daughter, out of schools that he can no longer afford. Together with their stepmother, Barbara, they embark on a cross-country road trip from their foreclosed Bel Air home to the upstate New York hideout of the eldest daughter, disgraced art world it girl, Sina. Sina, maybe. But with his son waylaid by a temptress in New Orleans, his wife ready to defect for a set of 1,000 thread count sheets, and an epic smash-up in North Carolina, Charles may have to choose between the old world and the new, between keeping his family intact and finally fulfilling his dream of starting anew in China. So here's an interesting uh, take on uh, the immigrant experience, as it were, because so many novels are about uh, sort of facing forward into America that... Uh, the uh, immigrant families are here, and they're sort of flashing back uh, to their backstories and their, their home countries as they try to make their lives here. But this family, uh, this Chinese family, seemed to be pretty well established in uh, America until the financial cr crash of 2008, and then uh, Charles actually wants to go back to the uh, homeland. Uh, <laughs> Uh, actually, my own great-grandfather was kind of similar. I, I don't think it was for financial reasons, but uh, he moved his family to New York from uh, Italy, and uh, my grandfather was uh, born in New York, but uh, shortly afterwards, my great-grandfather uh, thought that uh, he just didn't like uh, the culture, I think, and the lack of communication with his family back home, so he packed the family back, <laughs> and they... Uh, moved back to, to uh, the area, an area outside of Naples, and then my grandfather moved back to the U.S. Uh, when he was 18 for financial reasons. Anyway, that uh, is only tangentially uh, related to this, but <laughs> maybe that is part of the reason that uh, this book sticks out to me, and also because I've heard reports that it's funny, and uh, a lot of uh, these books can kind of be a bit self-serious, so maybe uh, this book uh, will take a different tone. And another reason I had to buy this book, or specifically where I had to buy this book at the library's book sale, is because every year in the Gaither's Book Book Festival, I make a purchase at the library book sale and I get this coupon! <laughs> this coupon gets me a little bit of money off of a purchase at the uh, Friends of the Library bookstores uh, in my county. And... Uh, Every uh, and it expires in uh, the end of July, and July 15th happens to be my birthday, so I use this little coupon as an excuse to do a big splurge <laughs> at the uh, the used bookstore nearest to me uh, in July. So <laughs> again, uh, in July, I'm expecting actually to be buying too many books on my own uh, with this justification. <laughs> so so uh, huzzah! <laughs> And finally, I will go into the library books that I recently picked up uh, as part of my June TBR. These are ones, I, unlike the others, that I actually am expecting to read this month. <laughs> I talked about all of them at length in my uh, last video about the uh, 2018 Sammy Roar Prize nominees, but I'll quickly hold them up again. This is If All the Seas Were Ink. It's a memoir by Ilana Kirshen. It's about uh, her divorce and how she uh, decides to undertake the daf reading of the Daf Yomi. I'm not sure if I'm technically saying that correctly, but it's said uh, the Daf Yomi is the practice of uh, reading the Talmud over a course of seven years. So this is her experience doing that. This is A City on a Hilltop, American Jews and the Israeli Settler Movement by Sarah Yael Hirschhorn. And this one isn't a library book, because I couldn't find it through any of my free sources, so I had to buy it, and that's my excuse. <laughs> this is Jews on the Frontier, Religion and Mobility in 19th Century America by Shari Rabin. So that about covers it for me now. I really am hoping and intending in June to cool it a lot with the book buying. I mean, maybe I'll even only do a library haul in, in June, but <laughs> maybe I shouldn't hold myself up to standards I can't reach. <laughs> in the meantime, I am really happy that I acquired all of these books. I tried, uh, for the most part, to stick to a TBR that I already had in place, so uh, expect reviews of uh, all of these books coming up uh, sometime in the future. <laughs> 
In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.